right. Hi, everybody. Happy, happy, happy Super Duper Wednesday. Nice to see you. Um, I see lots of people in the chat, some of whom are regulars, many of whom uh, I think are, are new. Lots of new names I'm seeing in the chat. This is great. Hi, everybody. Lots of people saying hi, 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 Belle. Alejandra, Felipe, lots of people. Miguel is here, Rafael is here, Jia Ying is here, I know she's here, <laughs> good. All right, Charo is here, Quack Duck, greetings, Fetty, everybody, wow. Lots of, lots of people, big group. Yoshi's here, Pasco is here, nice. Okay, so anybody who's new, I'm Sean, if we, if we haven't been uh, properly introduced, I'll be your teacher for the next hour. Lots of people coming in. Ross is here. Cool. I'll be your teacher for the next hour. I'm coming to you live uh, from the studio at uh, Canadian College of English Language here in Vancouver, British Columbia. And uh, I hope you're doing well wherever you are or whenever it is that you're watching this. Um, in the future or in the present, it's wonderful to see you. Okay? So um, if you're new or if you have forgotten since last week or this morning's class with Mark, We've got some moderators in the chat. Lane is there, he's friendly. Karim is in there, he's very friendly too, and they will help you. Um, I don't know if Mark's out there or not. Um, if you have questions during the class, just put your questions in, in the chat. I don't know if it's on this side or this, this side maybe. Put your questions in the chat and we will try to answer them as best we can, okay? And as often as we can. If we miss it, put it back in the chat and we'll see if we can answer it for you. So let's not waste any time. Let's, let's, ju let's jump right into it. Dive right in, shall we? OK, so here we go. Now, where did I go? There I am. OK. So today's lesson that we're going to start, I guess the, um, what we're going to be looking at is, is a structure that most of you guys are familiar with, or a, a grammar lesson. I guess I, I labeled it as a grammar lesson. but. It's something that's going to help you with your writing, with your reading, um, with, your, with your spoken use of the, of the language as well. Really, I want to look at, at a particular structure um, in this lesson, the purpose of which is to expand your range of sentence structure. As usual, I want to uh, kind of push you guys to go beyond the the safe structures that you're used to using. And my purpose today is to um, show you something that you know and then try to um, expand on that and, and maybe show you something that you've never seen before or make it easier for you to understand something that maybe you've seen before. Okay, so yeah, lots of people there. Luciano's rolling in. Selma's there too. Good to see you. Okay, so today we're talking about adjective clauses, which is something that we've discussed before, and I think even um, Mark's class this morning was about a, a, this, a similar topic, adjective clauses, also known as relative clauses. But today we're looking at some more advanced structures of adjective clauses. Okay, so maybe, hopefully, I'll be able to show you something new today, or just make you practice something. Okay, so let's get started. Adjective clauses, as we've talked about before, if you're not familiar with adjective clauses, uh, we've got classes um, in the playlist that you can go back and, and watch, okay, that um, explain this a great, in great detail, but adjective clauses are also known as relative clauses. Those two terms are exactly the same. I just, um, I think I like to use the word adjective clauses because it, it's, it makes it easy, maybe, for, for students to, to understand it. Asami's here. Hi. Scarlett is here, too. Hi, Scarlett. So relative clauses, adjective clauses, as we've talked about before, they are modifiers. They are modifying clauses, which means that they are a group of words that function together, like this. <laughs> they function together as one thing, and their job is to modify or to describe another noun or clause within the sentence, okay? So it's a group of words that function like an adjective, and that's why they're called adjective clauses, 
Okay, Thomas is here too. Hey, Thomas. So, as I said, we're going to start easy, er, ish, okay, and then we will, we, will, we will get progressively more difficult as the class goes on, okay? So, in a previous class, we've talked about adjective clauses, and I gave you this exact sentence, okay? We, I've shown you this picture before, and I've given you, you this example, okay? So, the girl who is wearing red lives on my street. Now, this is an example of an adjective clause, okay? In this case, this is a defining adjective or relative clause. And again, this is a group of words that is functioning as an adjective because these words in blue are describing or modifying or identifying the noun girl, okay? Laura's here too, hi. I'm actually curious, guys. I'm gonna ask you, if you're a first timer, if you've never been here before, I don't know if it, say so in the chat. If this is your first, I wanna know how many people this is your, your first class. I'm just curious about that. You can put that in the chat if you, if you like. Okay, so this is an example of an adjective clause. But this, we're, we're going to go beyond this today, as I said, okay? I'm gonna push you guys beyond the safety of the adjective clauses you know. Bell's a first timer, Quack Duck's a first timer, Laura is too, good, cool, okay. So let's talk about not just what an adjective clause is, but why we use it. Now obviously, in this example, as I said, we use the adjective clause to describe a noun, okay? And that's, that's a pretty good reason to use it. But we also want to use adjective clauses to help connect our ideas, to help connect our sentences, to try to avoid always using kind of short, simple sentences to kind of vary the style and the length of our sentences and all of that, okay? So look at this example. He teaches a class of seven students. The students all plan on entering a Canadian university, okay? Now, there's nothing wrong with these sentences here. They're fine, okay? But if all of your sentences are kind of short, um, relatively simple sentences, it, it might get a little bit repetitive. I mean, even in this sentence, you've got two nouns back to back almost that are the same, right? So sometimes you want to use these uh, adjective clauses to try to make your writing less repetitive, to try to clean it up, make it a little bit smoother, right? Get your ideas together in nice smooth sentences so you're not repeating things again and again. So in this case, I would just combine these two ideas and I would make a sentence. I'd take the students out, put who, make a com put a comma there, and that's it, right? There, there's your adjective clause. Students who all plan on entering a Canadian university. Now, just to be clear, I haven't started the new stuff yet, okay? This is just, I'm just setting you up for the good stuff, okay? So this is an adjective clause. These words, again, are functioning as an adjective describing students here, okay? So, again, there's nothing wrong with this. This is wonderful, but as I said, I want to push you a little bit. So we're gonna be, go beyond this, all right? Now let me show you two more sentences. Very similar, exactly the same idea, but just written slightly differently, okay? So he teaches a class of seven students all of the students plan on entering a Canadian university. So the second sentence, the meaning is the same, I've just written it slightly differently. And again, sometimes we want to combine these ideas rather than having two separate sentences. But again, you've got that repetition of students. So what's the easiest way to avoid that repetition? Well, maybe take students and change it to them. That's a start, okay? So he teaches a class of seven students all of them plan on entering a Canadian university. Again, this is fine, this is great, but I want to combine these, all right? I want to make an adjective clause out of that second sentence. How am I gonna do it? Well, let me show you how. I am first gonna take this period, I'm gonna get it out of there. I'm gonna turn it into a comma. Take the capital A, make it small, there we go. And then what I'm going to, going to do with this object pronoun, I'm going to make that a relative pronoun, okay? 
and I'm going to be left with this. He teaches a class of seven students, all of whom plan on entering a Canadian university. Ayub is here, don't worry if you're late, better late than never, don't worry about it. So this is my new sentence, and this, all, plus the preposition of, plus the relative pronoun, is a more advanced and more formal way, slightly more formal, way of using these relative clauses. Again, to expand your range of structures. Okay, now this is still a relative clause because all of those words together, the function of all those words together is to describe or to add information to the word student. Okay? And the, really the only difference is that it's, it's a little bit more of a formal structure. But we do use this in speech from time to time. Oh, I'm seeing some more purple hearts in the, in the chat. That's nice. And this is what we're going to be talking about today. Okay? We're going to be talking about um, using quantifiers like all with relative pronouns to create formal relative clauses or formal adjective clauses. Okay? And then we're going to get even more advanced, even more tricky. Okay, so let's talk about adjective clauses, what we're going to look at today. Adjective clauses with quantifiers, with prepositions, and with nouns. Three things I want to look at today. Okay, so let's start with quantifiers. And again, if you guys have questions, put them in the chat and we'll try to answer them. Okay, now this is just the beginning. Let's talk about quantifiers. Now, a quantifier is any kind of word, usually a, a determiner or a pronoun, that indicates or shows quantity, meaning how much. So words like both, some, many, one, two, three, four, five, six, all of these numbers are, are quantifiers, right? Um, neither is a quantifier as well. All of these words we use to show how much. Now we can use these in these formal adjective clauses. Okay, now let's look at the construction. This is how it works. You will see all of whom, none of whom, some of which, both of whom, neither of which, the quantifiers plus of, and either of those two relative pronouns, whom or which. Okay, and we will what you wrote is an adjective clause or phrase? Uh, coming in from Philippe or Felipe, um, I wrote an adjective clause. Okay, now it's a clause because it has a subject and a verb in there, which would make it a, a clause and not a phrase. Good, uh, good question. And PK is asking for the document. I will definitely share a document with you guys for sure. PK Montreal, nice to see you. Okay. And we'll talk more about, those are good questions. We'll talk more about those questions in a minute. And we'll talk more about um, who and whom. Well, actually, I think we're going to talk about whom now. Like why are we using whom rather than who? Because as most of you probably know, whom is quite a, a, a formal uh, word, right? We don't use the relative pronoun whom as much these days. But if you think about it very simply, if you were going to use a different pronoun here, you would say them, right? You would say all of them, both of them, one of them. So because them is the object pronoun, you have to use, you have to use whom, which is also the object pronoun, not the subject, okay? So because it's them, you're going to use whom to replace it, okay? Somebody's asking, are these prepositional phrases? No, nope, those are not prepositional phrases. Well, of whom is a prepositional phrase? But we'll talk more about that too later, Ayub. We will talk about prepositional phrases as well. Okay, so this is a quantifier, all, plus the phrase of whom, but together we're going to create clauses. Now let me show you an example, okay? Now this was my original example of an adjective clause all of whom plan on entering a Canadian university, okay? Again, a formal structure. The word all, that's your quantifier. Now, you could really use any different quantifier you want. You could say some of whom plan on entering, none of whom plan on, 
three of whom, any number you want, could go there to modify that word students, or in this case, seven students, okay? So, and again, we're, we're using whom because it's replacing them, three of them, okay? Let me show you another example, okay? So, I'm just gonna pour myself some water. There we go. At the meeting, Paul had, so, <laughs> this, is, this is too bad, poor Paul. At the meeting, Paul had several ideas. None of his ideas were very good, <laughs> okay? Well, he's trying, you know, good, good, good for Paul for trying. Okay, so let's, again, let's combine these and make an adjective clause in a more formal style, okay? So again, ideas and ideas, these are the, the nouns that are being repeated, right? So you're probably going to want to modify that a little bit in that second sentence. Right, so Raphael's uh, jumping ahead of me here, he's doing well. That's exactly what we're going to do, Raphael. We're going to say, again, take that period out, change it to a comma, Minimize the N, make that a, a, a lowercase n on none, and then his ideas become which, right? Now, Raphael first put none of whom. Now, that's the difference, obviously, be between whom and which, is that whom would be for people, right? Like the students, and in this case, ideas would be which. Now, that's when you decide to use one or the other. So at the meeting, Paul had several ideas none of which were very good. <laughs> All right, not a very nice thing to say, but yeah, good. Hum Hamid got it, got it. Yeah, right, none of which. Good. Okay, this is great. Now you guys are doing well. So again, this is an adjective clause, and it's modifying the word ideas, okay? It's just a slightly formal structure. Good. All right, so one thing about adjective clauses with these quantifiers, when you're using some or many or none or neither or both, usually, I would say always, but I, uh, there are always going to be exceptions. Yeah? I don't like using the word always when, when teaching something, but almost always are non-defining, meaning it's extra information. It's not essential to understand the noun, right? So we didn't use the adjective clause, none of which were very good, to identify the ideas. It was just extra information, okay? You guys are, are crushing it here. So how about this? Just to show me that you're on board with me before I get even more complicated, I'm gonna pop out for a minute here, okay? Actually, ah, actually first, I'm, I'm getting too excited here. I want to show you. <laughs> The first two sentences we looked at, okay, before I get you guys to do some work, one more thing, okay. Here were my first two sentences. He teaches a class of seven students who all plan on entering university. In this first sentence, I think structurally I should point out that the difference grammatically between these two different styles of clauses is that in the first one, the common type of adjective clause it's describing students, and the relative pronoun who, meaning students, is the subject of that entire clause, right? The subject is who, because who, plan, plan is your verb, okay? So that's important to look at, because if you look at the next one down, again, it's this adjective clause is modifying students. It's modifying the same thing, but grammatically, in this clause down here, whom, the relative pronoun, is not the subject of that clause. All is the subject, okay? So that's kind of the difference grammatically, is that in these formal styles, the subject of the two clauses is gonna be a little bit, a little bit different, okay? Something to keep in mind. So how about this? Just to make sure you guys are, again, on board, I jumped ahead of myself a little bit a second ago, but take a look at this. Three sentences. Three sentences. There we go. I'm going to pop out for 30 seconds. I want you to rewrite these sentences with a formal relative clause. Okay, I'll put the happy music on. 30 seconds. Put your answers in the chat. 
and then we'll go over it together, okay? Rewrite these sentences using the quantifier to create an adjective clause, okay? Get to work. If you have questions as well, put them in the chat, okay? Go for it. All right, good stuff. Lots of stuff happening in the chat. Lots of good answers there. Now, um, Philippe, you asked a question about punctuation. I'll answer that when we go over these, these answers. Good question. All right, lots of good stuff. Now, the one thing I noticed, lots of answers coming in, and I'll go over the answers here on the screen. Now, some people uh, were using the word, the pronoun them, rather than the relative pronoun whom. So you want to be careful of that because if you use some of them or many of them, then you're not going to be able to f connect those two sentences with, with a comma or whatnot, okay? Those are going to be two different sentences. So let me show you the answer for the first one. Again, I saw lots of people putting these answers in. Um, good stuff. So many of the people becomes many of whom. Okay, so the store was full of people, many of whom had been waiting for days to buy a new phone. Now, for the question about punctuation, notice that I have turned the period into a comma. And in my previous examples, I put a comma there as well. Okay, and that is because, as I mentioned before, all of these clauses with the quantifiers, some, many, of, uh, neither, one, two, three, all of these quantifiers create non-defining relative clauses. That means extra information. So as we talked about in the previous class about adjective clauses, if it's non-essential information, it has to be between commas or after one comma. So that's why here I am I'm putting a comma here, okay? Because I'm not identifying the people. I'm actually only talking about a one percentage of those people, right? So it is extra information. Good question. I hope that answers your question about punctuation, Philippe. Okay, so number two, 
again, lots of, lots of stuff coming in. Yeah, Kayo got it. Good, Selma's got it. You guys are, yeah, lots of, lots of good stuff coming in. So we said they had two cars, and both of the cars become both of which were damaged in the storm. Okay, so both of the cars becomes both of which, again, with that, with that comma there. Good stuff. And the last one, again, this is the, the easy part. Maybe, maybe, yeah, we'll get a little bit harder as we go. So the police arrested several suspects. None of these people turned out to be the murderer becomes none of whom, because we're talking about people, none of whom turned out to be the murderer. Now again, just to uh, clarify, if I have a comma here, I couldn't say them here because none of them turned out to be the murderer. That's an independent clause. That could be a sentence on its own, okay? None of whom turned out to be the murderer. That is not an independent clause. That is dependent and needs to be attached to the main clause, okay? Adjective clauses are dependent, and therefore you would change that period to a comma, okay? I hope that makes sense for you guys. So, Bell is saying, can we say who instead of whom? Um, excellent question. Now, typically in, in lots of cases with who and whom, it seems that in, in general usage of the word whom, we've re kind of replaced it with, with who, right? I mean, we often will say something like, who are you speaking to, right? Which is, it's acceptable in, in modern use of English, but technically, grammatically, some people would say, well, you should actually be saying, to whom are you speaking? But most people just say, ah, it doesn't matter, it's just conversation. We say, who are you talking to? But in the case of these sentences, I would say you need to use whom because whom is replacing the object pronoun them. Okay, so you can't say um, whom to replace them. Who would, would be a pronoun for, for they, right? So that's, it gets a little trickier that way, but maybe that was a long answer for a short question, but a short answer would be, no, you cannot use, you can't use who there. You have to use whom in these constructions, okay? If you say, who are you going to the movie with? No one is gonna get angry at you for saying that, but in this case, you have to use whom. And again, I hope that makes sense. Ayub is saying, so, so like these type of sentences can be called a complex sentence. That's absolutely right, Ayub. These are complex sentences because you've got at least two clauses, one independent and one of them is dependent. Excellent question. Okay, you guys are doing really well with this. So how about we take it up another notch here. Let's get a little bit more difficult and let me show you a couple other things that maybe a couple of you have never seen before. That would, be, that would make my day. If I, should, if I showed you something new, okay? So, prepositions. Yeah, Hamad there is uh, answering my question about uh, the subject, um, subject pronouns, object pronouns, good stuff. Okay, so prepositions. Look at this fancy car, is this a Tesla, maybe? Okay, <clears throat> so, check out this sentence. Most new cars now have sensors, okay? The vehicle can anticipate a collision before it happens with these sensors, okay? So again, there's nothing wrong with these two sentences together, they're fine, um, but I want to combine them. I want to make it a little bit smoother. I want to make it sound a little bit more advanced, okay? So I want to use an adjective clause. So how am I gonna do it? So yeah, you could say something like, um, most new cars now have sensors which can anticipate a collision before it happens. You could say something like that, but let's get a little bit more advanced and formal, and let me show you what I'm gonna do. So, the word sensor is being repeated. So that's kind of a hint on what you should uh, replace with a pronoun. But sensors is way down here, so let's, let's get tricky here. Let's take this whole prepositional phrase here with these sensors. Let's take that. Let's take that out of there and put it somewhere else. Let's, yeah, let's kind of sneak it in there, okay? 
change the um, sensor to which and change the punctuation. In this case, I take that period out of there. And now you've got this formal adjective clause. And I see that Miguel is, is ahead of me there too. Good. Most new cars now have sensors with which the vehicle can anticipate a collision before it happens. Now, you're using that whole group of words there is still an adjective clause, okay? And it's still modifying sensors. But now what we've done is we've, we've changed the order a little bit and we've put a prepositional phrase at the beginning of the adjective clause and say with which, okay? I know, a little, bit, a little bit tricky, but Miguel got it. He was way ahead of me here. So this, again, is another form of adjective clause that you may see. An adjective clause that starts with a preposition and one of these two relative pronouns, okay? So for whom, from whom, with whom, of which, by which, after which, uh, for which, from which, any of these combinations uh, can work, really, okay? So, again, slightly more formal. This sentence here, we probably are not going to say this in a conversation with our friends. They wouldn't want to slap you if you speak like that to your friend, trying to sound smart, trying to impress them with your English. <laughs> Raphael, for whom the bell tolls. Very nice. I want to know, is that a Hemingway reference or a Metallica reference? All right. <laughs> um, all right, so these you can use, as we said, here. Okay. Um, do I have another example to show you? I might. Where am I going with this? Aha. Okay. Now another thing too is <laughs> Karim says Metallica. I don't know. I, I think I'm more Hemingway than Metallica, but <laughs> so in this case, the word sensor is being described and modified by this adjective clause, right? Sensor is, is being modified. But again, like I kind of mentioned before with the, the quantifiers, in this adjective clause, vehicle is the subject. Okay, so the subject of the adjective clause is not the word that is being described as we're kind of used to, okay? So it's a little bit, a little bit different, right? In this case, which um, is not the subject, vehicle is, okay? So let me show you one more quick example and then I'm going to show you one more thing before you guys have to do some work for me, okay? Isn't this nice? Two friends having coffee. Oh, actually they're sisters, okay? So she has a younger sister. She has a very close relationship with her. So again, the same, the same concept. I'm going to take with her, that prepositional phrase at the end. I'm going to put it up top. I'm going to take her away and put whom there. And I'm going to take that and put a comma there. Okay? And then you're left with this. She has a younger sister with whom she has a very close relationship, with whom she is very close. Right. Selma and Scarlett and Miguel and all you, you guys jumped ahead of me here and, and you, you nailed it. Good, really good. Okay, I gotta get up early to, uh, to teach you guys something new. You guys are way ahead of me here, this is good. Okay, so this is, this is another way to, to make an adjective clause. Let me show you one more thing. Maybe this will blow your minds, hopefully, I don't know. Maybe, I, maybe I'll get to blow your mind with this one and then you guys can uh, do some work for me, okay? So check out this. This, oh, this, checking out the microscope here. What's he up to? Researchers conducted an experiment. The results of the experiment showed a link between loneliness and Pokemon Go. All right, I'm not sure what that link is, but I'm interested to read that, that report, okay? This is not true. I just made it up. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, so, in this case, I'm not sure what, Jean, I'm not sure what the, oh, that's a microscope. <laughs> Good for you, John. <laughs> yeah. So let's make an adjective clause in this sentence. Let's combine these two sentences. Okay. Let's let's make it smoother. So again, this is very similar to what we did before. You've got experiment being repeated. So that's a guess on where your pronoun's going to be. Right. There's a little hint. So take that period, turn it into a comma. Right. So you got to link these two ideas together. Take the capital T, make it a lowercase t, okay, we're on our way. Experiment, rather than repeating it, change it to your pronoun, which, and now you've got a beautiful sentence. Now it's not just of which, 
but it's the results of which, right? Now this is now going into new, t new territory, starting an adjective clause with the noun itself, then the relative pronoun, okay? So we're, here we've got researchers conducted an experiment, the results of which showed a link between loneliness <laughs> In Pokemon Go, yeah, it's beautiful. I know it's a, it's a, what is it? Gua guapa? Is that what it is? Okay. So, um, in this case, very similar to what we did with the quantifiers. Now, before we were just starting with quantifiers, like some of which, um, many of which. Now, we're saying the results of which. Okay. Now, again, this is an adjective clause. It's modifying experiment, and which is not. The, uh, the subject results is the subject of this adjective clause, okay? And you can use a variety of different words. You could say the price of which, the purpose of which, the color of which, the bottom, the, the top of which, the result and the extent of which. Um, now in this case, off the top of my head, uh, an example using whom doesn't, doesn't jump out. I think really um, we're just going to focus on using which for this one, okay? So the purpose of which, the price of which. I think I've got one more example to show you, and then it's practice time for you guys. I don't know, if I blew your minds, let me know if this is something completely new. If I'm going too fast, let me know, and I'll explain it again. Now let me show you one more example. They purchased a new house, lucky them, that's nice. The interior of the house has been completely updated. Okay, so again, the house, make it your relative pronoun, which, and then change the comma, change the, the capitalization, and then you're left with this sentence, right? They purchased a new house, the interior of which has been completely updated. Now again, this adjective clause is, is modifying house, but with this adjective clause, you're focusing not on the whole house, but on one part of it, one, one, piece of it, right? Maybe the outside of the house is very old, but the interior is what we're focusing on. Okay, it's new for Raphael, but you're getting it. Uh, it doesn't get any better for a teacher than that, right? It's new, but, but I understand. is music to my ears. <laughs> okay, um, that's great. So this, this is it. These are the, um, this is everything that I, that I have to show you today, these three ways quantifiers and prepositions and nouns at the beginning of adjective clauses. Oh, Mark's here. Okay, so Avatar is one of the worst movies of all time, the sequels of which shall be seen many times by Raphael and Mark. <laughs> yeah. That's a good example um, and very true. Okay, so now it's, it's practice time for you guys, okay? Let me bust out of here. I'm going to put something for you guys in the chat here, okay? Let me copy that. Come over here. All right. And that's your copy. This is my copy, so I'm going to make this nice and big. Everybody, I've just put the document in the chat. You can open that up, or you can just look on the screen with me, if that works. Yeah. I'm going to make you guys practice this. So, I've given you five sentences or five combinations of sentences and I want you to try to rewrite these with formal, relative, or adjective clauses. So basically, I want the first sentence to be your main clause and the second sentence, I think, would work best as the adjective clause. Okay, so change the words, use quantifiers perhaps, use um, nouns, use prepositions, and try to make these smooth sentences with an adjective clause in that advanced structure, okay? Do what you can. I'm going to pop out, but I'm always with you in spirit, all right? And if you have questions, if you're stuck, if you're scared, put your comment or your question in the chat and we'll help you. And, um, and that's it. Get to work. Do some work for me and put your answers in the chat and then we'll go over it together. All right, guys, I'm out of here.
All right, everybody, this is good stuff. Lots of stuff coming in. Good, let's go over it. Yeah, sorry, oh, sorry to turn off the music, Thomas. I know you were, uh, you were enjoying it. I, I, <laughs> I enjoy it, too. Um, all right, let's go over some of these answers together. Now I'll put the answers up on the screen. I saw lots of people answering number one. What do I see for number one? Yeah, most people got us, some of which, some of which. Selma, Miguel, you were in there real quick. Ayub, Alejandra, Scarlett, yeah, lots of people. Pascoa got it too. Okay, so rather than rewriting, I'll, I'll get, maybe I'll get a little bit lazy. I'll go back like this and say, I put a comma there, right, and say, reptiles most known to use venom are snakes, some of which inject venom into their prey via fangs. Maybe I'll make this a little bit bigger so everybody can see it. Okay. That's really good. Now, I think I noticed someone in there. Who did that? Somebody said some of whom inject venom. Now, I think I would, I would go with which because um, snakes being animals rather than people. Although I know that sometimes we do refer to certain animals like pets as, you know, he or she or like, like they are people. But I think which in this case works a little bit better if you put the answer whom, I would, I would switch that up, but that's, that's good. And I think I noticed maybe one or two people forgot about the, the of there, okay? I think, no need to, to call you out on it, but that's, yeah, make sure you've got the preposition of in there too. Good, it's a good, good start. So canines, meaning dogs, animals in the dog family, right, the canines have an incredibly keen sense of smell. They may even be able to detect cancerous tumors with this sense. So there's your hint right there, right? And a lot of, again, a lot of people got that. Um, Luciano, you came really close because you said with which may even. So you're real close. So you took that. Let me show you here. This is, that's good. Took that out. And put that, oops, put that there, right? But just make sure you've got the subject there, Luciano, okay? Um, and yeah, a bunch of other people got that. Raphael got it. With which they, yeah, good. Good, 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 good. Lots of answers coming in. Okay. So again, yeah, in this case, you're using that prepositional phrase here, right? So you want to change that, obviously. I haven't changed it yet, but with which. So canines have an incredibly keen sense of smell with which they may even be able to detect cancerous tumors, some scientists believe. Good. Okay, three more. Three more, and then I'm going to get to the, uh, the mistake of the week, or I think Raphael will never forgive me if I, if I skip it for another week. Okay, so um, C... The government has made radical changes to its policy, environmental policy. The long-term consequences of these changes. Let me pick somebody else here. Who, who's got it? Alejandro, that's a good. That's a good try. Not quite with the which the long-term consequences doesn't quite work there. Luciano, you're on the right track as well. Raphael, you're, yeah, you're, you're close. You're, you're pretty close there. I think a couple people got it there. I think Ayub got it. Um, and that is, you take this back here, and you put a comma there, and you say, the long-term consequences of which. You know, this, is getting, this is getting tricky now, isn't it? I was nice at first, but now I'm getting... <laughs> A little, a little mean. So in this case, this government has made radical changes to its environmental policy, the long-term consequences of which will not be known for some time. Because which, in this case, is the relative pronoun for changes, right? The changes to the policy. So the consequences of these changes, we will not know for some time. So that's quite, quite advanced. But uh, you guys are doing really well. So how about two, two more? Selma got it too. Yeah, good work. Awesome. 
Okay, so two more. In her acceptance speech, she dedicated the award to her late grandfather. She inherited her love of words and books from him. Now I saw, I think it was John, gave his answer. And again, John, you were close, but you switched up the preposition. I think John put in, and I think someone else put of, maybe Asami, maybe? I, I'm, I'm, I can't remember who put that one there, but I wouldn't change the preposition. I'd keep the preposition the same and say that. Okay, so she dedicated the award to her late grandfather from whom she inherited her love of words and books. Okay, so in this case, whom meaning grandfather. Okay? Selma put of. Yeah. So you inherit something from. Now, that's just going and, and uh, connect, that's connected to uh, what we call dependent prepositions. So certain prepositions go with certain verbs. So I would say inherit is followed by um, from, not of. Bell is saying <coughs> of whom? Oh, yeah, so I just answered that question, right? We don't say inherit of, we say inherit from, and that's why we, that would be from there, okay? Good. And the last one, for its spring collection, the retailer, off retailer offered a series of new designs. Of all these designs, the most popular was a silk trench coat. Now this one was kind of tricky. Did anyone, did anyone do that one? Where do we have it? Where, where is it? All of which the most popular, yeah. Kayo, you're, you're on the right track. Kayo, yeah. All of which the most popular. Now this one was kind of mean, I think, because all of which the most popular doesn't doesn't really make sense. Honestly, I would say you have to take this out. Now this is a bit of a magic trick. I would take that out and go here and say a series of new designs, the most popular of which was a new was a silk trench coat. Look at that. All right. What a beautiful sentence. What a beautiful adjective clause, <laughs> okay? Now in this case, I'm using the noun, although I am using or, um, the superlative or the um, comparative, right? Or no, superlative rather, adjective, which can, can be used as a, as a noun, right? The most popular, meaning the most popular design. Um, and then followed by the prepositional phrase, okay? So this is, <laughs> I'm getting an OMG from Kaya, nice. That's exactly what a, what a teacher wants to see. Just blowing your minds, opening your minds, broadening your horizons, just teaching you, changing your life. That's what I do. <laughs> Kaya, you're confused now? Yeah, I mean, this, this structure can be a little bit um, scary maybe when you first see it. But really, if you, if you break it down, if you, if you create a new sentence, now let's simplify it. Let's start a new sentence and say that. And go backwards. Let's go backwards. Right? So for its spring collection, the retailer offered a new series of designs or a series of new designs. Okay? The most popular of these designs was a silk trench coat. Now John is asking, is spring collection the subject um, of the, no, spring collection is not the subject, John, no. In this sentence, okay, um, the most popular is the subject, okay? We use that superlative adjective as, as the noun, as the thing, right? Um, sometimes the, the adjective can stand alone without the noun as um, the subject itself, okay? Um, so in this case, let's go backwards now. The most popular of these designs, we can say which, and go back, put a comma there, and now we've got that sentence, okay? Designs the most popular of which was a silk trench coat. So Fetty is asking, the adjective clause is to avoid 
repeat, repeating, yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's to avoid repetition. It's to make your sentences nice and smooth, to avoid having to write several sentences rather than just one nice, clean sentence. It's a style choice, guys, really. Um, and to be honest, there's no reason why you're ever going to have to write this sentence. But as we said before, we want to expand your, your range and your variety of sentence structures, OK? Um, English is crazy. I agree with that. <laughs> yeah. So this is a style choice. Don't feel like you have to do this, but these sentences are out there, right? So the purpose of this lesson, or this lesson, the purpose of which is to help you with your writing and your use of the language, but also to um, make you aware of it when you're reading in English, you're going to notice these now, I think, when you're looking around. And even if you, when this class is over, if you go back to my opening little greeting, I actually use these adjective clauses at the beginning of class before I started teaching them. So you can always go back and listen to how I use them um, and see if you can hear the different adjective clauses that I'm using. Okay, so Alejandro's asking this question. Why did you put the most popular instead of which first? Because I'm modifying with this adjective clause, okay, this relative clause is modifying or describing designs, okay? But in this clause, I'm not talking about all of the designs. If I put which at the beginning, new designs which, then that would mean that this adjective clause is just about designs. But it's not. It's about this clause here is about the most popular of these designs. Okay, So that's what we're talking about here. We're creating an adjective clause but we're getting more specific. We're talking about the popular things or the, the biggest or the best or, or something like that, right? Um, as we said, the price or the interior or the purpose. Okay, so if you guys have more questions, put it in the chat. I see we're running low on, on time, but I'll go a couple minutes over today, okay? Because as I said, I don't want to break hearts for a third week in a row, okay? And I want to put the mistake of the week up here. All right, so mistake of the week. There we go. I'm going to put a sentence up here, and I want to see who can find the mistake the fastest. Who is the fastest student on the internet? OK, I'm going to pop out for 15 seconds, and I want you to find me the mistake. OK? Can you spot the mistake in this sentence? Are you ready? Find the mistake. I'm out of here.
<laughs> okay. Interesting. Now I'm going a little bit of I'm going a little bit fast here. Some people are saying that this that this comma is a mistake, and I guess it could be. This could be a, a comma splice. You could be saying that even crime rates are lower now than 20 years ago, and then semicolon. People mistakenly believe they're rising. Yeah, but if I put a semicolon there, guys, this sentence would still look kind of weird, right? Even crime rates are lower now than 20 years ago. People mistakenly believe they're rising. PK Montreal saying that they, they mistakenly believe that they know they's okay. Mistakenly, Ayuba saying, <laughs> no. Mistakenly is okay. Mistakenly believe is okay. Really, actually, what I want to bring to your attention is the, the biggest problem with this sentence is the use of the word even. Okay, this is a really common mistake that I see um, my students make in writing, and it's this use of even um, as if it were a linking word, right? You start this complex sentence with even, but you don't, you still don't really have the, um, the linking word, the conjunction there, right? Even is not a conjunction. Even is a word that we use to emphasize. John, did you get it? I didn't see that in there. Yeah, maybe I missed it. Did I miss it or did you just secretly get it at home and not, not share the answer? <laughs> but if I missed it, John, then apologies. You're the fastest student on the internet, okay? So even itself is not a conjunction, okay? Oftentimes students use it as a conjunction and it's wrong. And everybody now is furiously putting in the answer, yes, absolutely. In this case, you need it to be even though, right? Now the sentence makes sense, right? Even though crime rates are lower now than 20 years ago, people believe, people mistakenly believe they're rising. Yeah, Bell's saying even though, yeah, right. Good. Or although instead of even, right. Um, but just basically my, my little tip for today is make sure that you're properly using the word even. Even is really just a word, as I said before, to emphasize something like even, even his mother won't lend him money. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where that sentence came from, but yeah. Oh, Selma got it a little late, but that's okay. Good stuff. So be careful of your use of the word even. Okay, that's my mistake of the week this week. Okay, so because we're a little behind, let me pop out here. That he's saying even, even if. I think even though is better because even if usually is used for a, uh, a condition, a conditional. All right, Alejandro's got it, cool. Okay, so let me pop out. Green screen, all right. <laughs> Kai is saying, I can't even understand today's lesson. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good example. So you did learn something because that works. <laughs> okay. Good. Don't worry. Even Sean sometimes has trouble understanding things. Even me. All right. Well, you're welcome, Asami. Thank you for, thank you for coming. Thank you for that uh, lovely pink heart. <laughs> so... Thank you guys for coming. It's always a pleasure for me to pop in here on a Wednesday and, and teach you guys. Um, in the afternoon, I hope you keep coming. Keep telling your friends, your family. Um, put it on Facebook. Spread the word. Shout it from the mountaintops. Oh, thank you, Alejandro. That's nice of you to say. Um, yeah, you, well, of course. <laughs> even though. You're using even though. That's good. You love my lessons. I love, I love teaching these lessons, too. I think they're a lot of fun. And uh, I look forward to it every week. So keep watching us. Watch the videos. Go back and watch the videos as many times as you need to, guys. That's why they're there. If you have questions, put it on the Facebook group. Learn English on Facebook. Find us there. All right. Come to Vancouver and study with us. You could do that. That would be great. Keep watching Mark's class in the morning on, on Wednesdays. Although Mark, um, I believe, I don't know if he announced it yet or not. Uh, maybe I'm... Uh, spoiling it, but Mark's on vacation for a couple weeks, um, so we'll we'll announce what's happening with his class over the next couple weeks. Um, I'm still around though, so don't be too sad. So yeah, keep watching, spread the word, get more students into this crazy um, experiment we've got going on here, this global classroom, 
and um, keep practicing. Try to use these structures that we learned today. It's kind of a use it or lose it type stuff, right? Like if you, if you don't try to actively use these structures in your writing, then they will always be a little bit um, hard for you to understand or, or uh, feel comfortable with, okay? So keep practicing and um, we'll see you here next week, okay? Oh, <laughs> live from the Caribbean from Mark, or live from Mark's kitchen maybe. Anyway, thanks guys. We'll see you next time.